Hello, everybody. I'm George Williams. I'm the next search catalog coordinator for Northeast Kansas Library System in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm Christopher Brandon with the Cooperative Information Network and the Coeur d'Alene Public Library. And today uh, we're going to have a double feature. We're going to have a kind of a, a Koha uh, smackdown, or as I like to call it, the Koha hackdown. Both George and I are going to do uh, a couple different presentations, just, just some short hacks uh, for Koha. And uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. But uh, as always, we'd like to plug our sponsor that's uh, helping us provide these videos. Uh, this is uh, always sponsored by Koha US and you can visit Koha US at koha-us.org and you will find all of our videos on the learn page down at the bottom at the watch Koha US original training videos. And also we would like to just uh, remind everybody that the 2021 conference uh, is coming up in September, September 21st through the 24th. And we would love to see you there. And we would love it if, uh, you know, people participate with us. And we always get some great ideas from these conferences. And it's always great to see people face to face. You know, there's, there's only so much you can do uh, online. And we love to see people online at the monthly meetings, but coming to the conferences is a huge deal and makes connections that you don't normally form over the uh, video meetings. Yeah, that being said, the conference will be offered uh, online as well. Uh, it'll be li streamed live and uh, most of, I'm on the conference committee and I think almost everybody has agreed to let us record their uh, presentations. So they will be available later. We understand that, you know, um, there are, uh, I've talked to a couple of people already that they, their library has just, uh, one person in particular, their library isn't letting anybody travel um, in 2021 because of COVID um, unless they're presenting at a conference. So, so if you can't travel, there are other options to, to watch online or to watch it later. In Absolutely. A so, and we've but had, it is great to see the people there. It's yeah. Uh, I've been to all but one of the Koha US conferences in person. Um, and it's, they're just awesome. It's my favorite conference to go to. And I think you've been to all of them, haven't you? I have, I have, I do not. Well, okay. I didn't go to the one, the, the virtual one last year. I will yeah. admit that. Um, uh, well, and I only went to half of it because my mother-in-law had a stroke the week before. So, um, so I watched part of it online, but, uh, but I watched all of it eventually um, because it was recorded. And we've been recording these for a long time. If you go to uh, the Koha US YouTube page, I think every conference presentation we've recorded is available there, so. And I did follow up with those. Um, yeah, I, th I think just, you know, a year of COVID and it just got to me and <laughs> my heart was not <laughs> in it. You know, it's just like, I was so let down. You know, I was looking forward to going to McKinney and I'm glad that we're, we're getting uh, another opportunity to go to McKinney because uh, it sounds like a great place. And, um, you know, we've interacted with uh, their library and, and their staff there. Uh, over the years as they've been a part of Koha US. And so uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, if you can make it happen, do come. But if you can't, we still want to see you uh, online. We've done a pretty good job about, uh, uh, we've, we've learned what works and what doesn't about uh, uh, broadcasting those uh, conferences and uh, the presentations. So. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I would say is if you go back to some of those older conferences, like I know my presentation in Coeur d'Alene um, was recorded and is available on YouTube, but it's a voice only recording um, for whatever reason, uh, the way it was being recorded, it only records like a blank screen <laughs> for most of the presentation. Um, so we've learned a lot since then. Uh, yeah. If you look at the ones from uh, Pueblo and from uh, uh, other conferences since then, um, we've gotten better at it. So, 
a lot has improved over over the last year, especially with the video conferencing. So we have some good yeah. tools at, at our disposal. Now the so, background in in your uh, video there, that's the uh, a picture of the meeting room at Coeur d'Alene after the conference uh, in 2017, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we trashed that place. And, and it, our heart was just never in it to, to reset the place. This this is what happens when. <laughs> yeah, this is how much fun we together. have. That's what you end up with. So it's from some video game, right? Yes, Portal. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right, well, George, I'm going to let you kick it off. So what I'm going to demo, um, I went to one of the cataloging meetings uh, last week, or may, it might have been two weeks ago. And somebody at the cataloging meeting had a question, um, and I've already forgotten who it was. But uh, I'm going to look up a record here in the Koha US demo site, and I'm going to click on edit. And so we've got this list of tabs up here, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, this is for the mark record. And it used to be these tabs were on the site, weren't they? They were different. Some way or another, they, they were might really have been. Different. I remember these thin tabs. Yeah. And a few years ago, um, the, they got changed up to these overhead tabs. And this is how you move from the the 100s, the 200s, the 300s, and so on. And the question at the cataloging meeting was, you know, is there a way to add information up here? So um, I added this in our system a long time ago. And I said, yes, there is. <coughs> and uh, I thought we'd just plug that into a video here. So what we've got um, are, I just plugged them all in here once. The, the basics of this are, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so here we've got uh, some code in jQuery that's looking for uh, well, actually, I'm on the wrong page now. Let me save this and show you what it looks like when we're done, and then I'll walk through how it works. So we go back to edit the record. Now it's got the information here coded in control encoded fields, main entry, title entry. So it plugs all that information in up there. And I got this information, I created the headings for those tabs just by looking, um, I just copied the data from the MARC standards. Not exactly, but pretty close, uh, you know, coded in control fields. I think actually here it says um, uh, control fields number and, and code fields. So, you know, I, I changed it a little bit. You know, I dropped the word field off all of those, but. But the way that this uh, code is actually working, um, we'll go up to one of these. So the class on all of on this whole uh, little box up here at the top of the page is toolbar tabs container. So that's the first thing I'm doing is I'm grabbing that class, and then I'm looking for that uh, href that's in there, which is kind of what identifies it as this specific tab. I'm looking in here for this href uh, with an ID tab OXX. And then to that, I'm just adding some HTML. I'm putting in a line break so that it comes after the zero, so that it's on a separate line from the zero. And then I'm putting in the text here, code and control fields. Um, And then what's the other part of this? I'm appending that. And um, I changed the, uh, the font size, I believe. Oh, I'm putting uh, the next part puts the uh, coded and control field down here. Nice. So what that second one is doing is it's looking for this uh, ID at the top of the tab and it's saying wherever it sees that, it's gonna stick this after 
the data that's already there. So that just gets me this nice layout. Um, and you can change any of these to say whatever you want. You, can, you don't have to use this text. Um, you can put whatever text you want in here. And I'll make sure to add this to the jQuery library before, um, before this video goes out. But it does make it a lot easier, especially if you have people that, you know, cataloging, um, you know, if you're most of my libraries, they don't have people that just do cataloging. Mm -hmm. They don't have uh, dedicated catalogers. They usually have a director who works part time um, and they're in charge of cataloging and circulation and cleaning the bathrooms and everything. And so a lot of times it's for those people that don't have pure dedicated li uh, library cataloging experience, it's good to have these uh, notes at the top that tell you what each field is for. So that's a pretty simple, uh, it's a pretty simple trick to do. So let me pull that uh, jQuery back out of there so that you can show us what you're going to show us and I'll stop sharing my screen. So when you're doing a report, You'll often have reports that are going to ask what library you are uh, working with. And if you're like me and doing reports all the time, you're usually choosing the, uh, choosing the same library all the time, which is your library. And uh, somebody put out some code. I don't know. I just wrote my own code, but I think that others have, have done their own iterations of this. But uh, there are ways so that it will always choose your library in the in the drop down uh, for reports, and you can do it in other places too. I specifically chose uh, reports because usually when you're doing reports, you're doing it about your library. You can still choose other libraries, but it's nice, you know, for the bulk of the time you're usually doing you're dealing with your own library, and so this makes uh, one less click for people. And when I did this. I got a lot of uh, uh, cheers from consortium staff with this. Um, you can use this in other areas uh, where you might want the drop down to uh, default. You just have to find the right ID for it. And you know you can limit it to a particular page, or you could just let it be blanket open for the entire site. I don't particularly like to do blanket open for the entire site because you never know what kind of side effects you run into. So, you know, use, do that with caution. Uh, but I, I target the pages that I, that I work with. So I don't right. cause chaos. Um, so to do that, go into jQuery here and I'm going to refresh my page just to make sure that's how you left it. Perfect. So this one, first thing that we're going to stick in here is a variable. This is grabbing the library name. So uh, it is grabbing that information from uh, up top here in, in this uh, section, uh, the code for your library, which it, it, you need the code itself, um, is going to be in so we're looking at the, 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 just the user menu and it's looking for a span login uh, branch name uh, and grabbing the first iteration of that because I think there might, there might be more. Yeah, if you, if you don't put in the first, it, you end up with duplicates, you end up with two. Yeah. I don't so, know exactly why, but the, it comes up twice. And I think it's because it's a class, not an ID. And I think it's duplicated more than one place. Why I just did that, let me. What I wanted to do was inspect. So the login branch name. Yeah, so actually it's grabbing. You're grabbing the name of the code. I thought it was grabbing the code but it looks like it's grabbing the name so and you know you can always test this stuff I'm and I want to show I think it's you know it's a good thing to show here too I always like to test this stuff 
Um, and an easy way to do this uh, is going to the console log. So I can stick this variable in the console log. So I'm just going to say console.log parentheses, and I'm going to put library underscore name and with a semicolon. I'm going to save that. And if I refresh, uh, well, I'm not going to refresh the screen. I'm going to refresh the screen. And we'll do an F12. And looking at the console tab, we can see that it grabbed Koha-US. So it grabbed the actual name. So I think it's just matching the name in there, not necessarily a code. OK. All right, so we know that works. I can take the console log out of there. And then the next part is it's going to, on the guided reports page, it's going to find an option and it's using a filter function and let's see here in that filter function it's going to return a library name so it is looking for this particular text in an option so if i go back here and I inspect this. So in this selection, it's looking for the option that has Koha-US uh, as the, the text in there. Right. And I don't generally build things like this with a, a filter. This, this just happens to be how this particular one works out. Um, I'm sure that there's other ways for this to work, but this is what ended up working for me. And I, I don't know if this was something that was passed down. This, it's not my typical coding. And then we have to, you know, after we find that, we have to close the, the function. And then I add a little bit to that. So uh, in addition to, you know, doing the find with a filter, um, it's adding an attribute to that. To the one that it found. To the one that it found and marking it as selected. That's what makes, this is this is the part that sets it. Right, right that's here. the part that does the work. Yes. So when that's all said and done, when we run our report, instead of it going to whatever's at the top of the list, it'll now default to the library that you're logged in as. Right. Pretty cool. One less thing to have to set in your reports. I would never set this for my libraries. I, yeah, I want to punish them with having to do the extra clicks. <laughs> Sometimes I worry about you, George. <laughs> All right. Well, that that's it. Short and sweet. That is our Koha US hack down. Uh, you can vote for your favorite hack <laughs> in the video. Let us know which one you thought was more helpful. Yeah, leave yeah. a comment and tell us which one was better. Yeah, I would love <laughs> feedback on this one. But uh, thank you for, for showing up for another uh, great tutorial video. And we will see you in a couple weeks. See you later.